Hey there folks, I hope you're having a good day. And today I'm going to talk about and demonstrate and show you how to fix this doggone oil cooler line that seems to be everybody's nightmare. And first it started off because I had low mileage. The gasket on this side right down here was leaking. So I replaced that and I have a video on that and I'll leave a link down on the description below. But then afterwards, probably about half a year later, this bolt, for whatever reason it's made for, leaks. Okay, and I'm gonna show you how to make a tool and keep it on the body of the car. Make a tool, put it in here to open it up, replace the plastic seal in there, put an actual O-ring in there, and then put some Teflon tape on there to seal it up for good. Now, if your lines are all cracking and bleeding from these here, yep, you're gonna have to lift that engine block and remove the steering column and get that monster out. It is a nightmare. But I found out this is my only problem. My lines are good. I bought a new line, but once I discovered this and this little Allen head here, I knew I had a solution. Little safety real quick here. Don't put your vehicle on jack stands. That's just stinking dangerous. Get some good car ramps and put some wheel chocks on the back and make it safe for your operation. All right, we're underneath the car now, and I just wanted to show you exact locations. So if you're not ready for this or you really don't know what you're doing yet, I need to show you at least where you are on the bottom of the car once you get it all properly up off the ground. Okay, this is the transmission pan right here. Oh, I was gonna use my pencil to make it more official. Here's my transmission pan here, okay? And then you're gonna find your oil filter. Hopefully you change your oil and then, then you'll understand this a little better, okay? If you don't change your oil, maybe you should not tackle this job, but it is not a bad job. Okay, now we're gonna look right here. All right, I'm gonna point with the pencil here. There is a dust plate on the transmission, okay? Here's the oil filter. There's a dust plate here, and that's a 10 millimeter bolt right there. You need to take that 10 millimeter bolt off and take this dust plate off. It's real easy. Just take the bolt off and this thing slides right off. Okay. So you got to take that off, put it somewhere safe and put that bolt somewhere safe. So you don't lose that doggone thing. Okay. Now we're way underneath the monster here. Okay. And there's the oil cooler line. I'm pointing to it with the pencil here. And there's that doggone bolt, that crazy bolt, whatever that thing's for, it takes an Allen tool. And I'm going to show you how to cut a piece and make that sucker really cheap for probably under 10 bucks for the whole operation, including the hacksaw blades. Well, if you have to buy a hacksaw, it's probably about 15 bucks, but still it's way cheaper than spending $600 at a dealership to get this done, okay? So there it is, there's the plate where I replaced the seal there, but now you're gonna have to take this bolt out and replace this doggone seal there. Now, right here, you're gonna see this drive shaft here because it's an all wheel drive, but the four wheel drive has it also, okay? I don't know if uh, the other ones that don't have this shaft have this oil cooler line or just a block off plate, I'm not sure, okay? But I do know if you do have this, you're gonna have to take this off, okay? And these are 11 millimeter bolts, okay? Four of them all the way around. You're gonna have to use an extender, probably three or four to go all the way back here so you can extend out so you can get on it and get it off. And then you're gonna pry it off of a large, large screwdriver or pry bar and it will pop out quite easily. And I will show that in the video or talk about it, okay? But anyway, I just wanted to show you the parts and places, and also make sure you work on the car while it is cool, because I'm gonna show you why. If you can see my arm here, I got burned. I just barely bumped that catalytic converter there, okay? That catalytic converter there burnt me so doggone bad. I'll tell you, it seared my skin right off. And this is almost, oh gosh, I would say a week later, and I'm still burnt pretty bad, so. It sucks, so don't do anything while it's hot underneath here because you got two cats here, one on this side and one on that side. It will burn the biscuits out of you. Okay, so you're looking at my seal and you're going, hey, that thing's not leaking. Okay, well, because I already did the job and I'm showing you the parts to where to get to it, okay? Now, let's see if I can get a good view on it here. It's, it's kind of a hard one to see sometimes. There's no oil on that puppy. It's clean now. It's good to go, okay? So I'm gonna show you in the video here. We're gonna move on to the repair part. Let's go and get it done. All right, to begin the process here is you're going to have to find a 3 8 hex head tool to cut, which I already made a mark here where I'm gonna cut it at. If you can see that clearly, it's kinda, camera doesn't wanna focus on it. But right there, you're gonna take the hex head tool, you're going to cut it. You're gonna cut about probably a half an inch there. I'll have to measure it with a hacksaw. It's gonna be tedious. 
And you can get this for a buck 99 at Harvard Freight. And then you've got to get Nitrile O-ring assortment. So you can get that 9 16 O-ring once we get the plug out. And then you're also going to need a 3 8 uh, box end wrench to remove when this piece gets in there and you put it in the hole on the oil cooler line to get that bolt out to replace the gasket. It's going to be a big mess and we're going to go after it and try it out. All right, after an hour with the hacksaw here, I finally got this little piece off of the 3 8 uh, hex. So to use in that hole there on the uh, uh, oil cooler lines. So we're getting there. All right, I got it out. And the 3 8 uh, fit like a dream in the hole there. And uh, I, I'm wrapping it with a uh, Blue Monster pipe thread and make sure that you wrap it around accordingly. Uh, you want to go the uh, this direction here with it. When you want to wrap it, you're facing it towards you as it's going in the hole like this. And you want to wrap it this way, this way. You see I'm going that way. So you want to go around this way to wrap your PTFE. And the, uh, the seal that came out of it, well, let's see if I can find it here. The seal that was on there is like some kind of plastic thing and it's very poorly made and had a crack in it so that was leaking also now the one i had to select because i had to find something close to the seal as i use the uh, nitrile um, uh, o-rings here and uh, i use the three quarter three quarter uh, 15 16 by 32 so it's the three quarter one here in the middle in the middle and the fourth one from the left here the fourth one from the left in the middle three quarter 15 sixteenths and that's what i used here so i put it right under here underneath the uh the pipe thread uh ptfe thread tape you want to use ptfe because it's uh it's 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 resistant to oil and gas and all kinds of stuff so you want to use the good stuff there so get that and uh i'll put that in the description below how to, where to find it so we're going to put my piece back in there that i cut off spent an hour hacking that thing off a hacksaw if you have something better to cut it with <laughs> bless your soul because it was brutal for me so i'm going to get it back in and see if it works all right, there it is. It's already out of the body itself for the oil cool line. If you can see it, it's right there. Oh, my finger's kind of, there we go, right there. Now it's gonna focus on my finger. Right there, that's uh, where I took it out of uh, the, the uh, oil cool line itself. And I just used a regular pan here because my, uh, my oil reservoir is humongous. So I just used a pan here. It doesn't lose a lot of oil, but you still need to check it afterwards. Like right now, it's just going for no reason. But anyway, the drive shaft had to be moved out of the way. Those are 11 millimeter bolts. There's uh, four of them. It's a, it's a bear to get off. So it's best to use something like a humongous screwdriver like this to pry it off gently. And uh, I got this at, at a, a Harbor Supply a long time ago. The tip broke up, but this has been just a really, really useful pry bar for me forever. And uh, it's, it's going to be fairly difficult to get this shaft back in. You've got to push it backwards and then go back in and try to line it up. And then you're going to get your, your bolts and stuff. Also, another thing is your cover plate on your transmission there. It's right up in here. I don't want to get all on my, my camera here, but right in there, there is a pan. There it is right there. If you can, there's my finger. It's right in there. It's just a 10 millimeter bolt right here. This little bolt holds the plate on this little 10 millimeter right here and, and it goes right in this little piece right here you have to take that out but you have to be very 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 careful to not drop this 3 8 piece you spent hours cutting to get it off so you can use it onto the cap there that needs to be plugged up so that's uh pretty much the tip on that there i'm going to put it back in now and give you a look once i get it in but it's just going to go right in there okay Okay, here's the homemade hex here already in, and I've already got it back in place. I got it in. And all you have to do is just take your 3 8 and put it on there. You see that clear enough there? Put your, uh, your 3 8 on there on the uh, box end and just tighten it till it slips off, and then that's good and tight. And uh, I should be good to go. I don't think I'm going to have any more leaks with this thing at all. I mean, it's uh, definitely... Uh, Definitely looks clean. It's not it's not leaking. I've got that PTFE sticking out. I've got that rubber O-ring in there. I mean, what more do you want? I mean, it's it's got to work. So I have to give it a hot fire test here and run it up and see how it goes. But I've got to get everything back together. Don't forget your plate. Your plate that goes on here. Covers up your transmission well to keep it clean, that plate. And then you've got to put your drive shaft back on. It's a little bit of a booger. If you can do it, I know you can. If you've done all this that I've done, you can put this thing back on. You can do it. So all I'm telling you is this a, this is a cheaper way to do it. My The rest of the line's good. 
it's just uh my gasket before went bad and then this doggone bolt went bad and then when the bolt went bad this gasket went bad and then i then this bolt went bad and everybody's asking me you know it sure wasn't the bolt sure wasn't the bolt well it wasn't at the time but as uh time progressed yep it started leaking because i've got a really low mileage yukon here and uh, i'm just hitting a hundred thousand right now after all these years so it's uh it's it's everything that's going wrong with everybody else's is finally catching up with mine so here we go all right so in conclusion here folks uh the job is uh done and it's been a week and a couple of days and it has not leaked at all i've gone underneath there and double checked everything uh some of the people um have asked me at autozone you know uh if i they've they, they have a hard time because some of these uh uh, on the, some of the models, the the bolt there, the nut or whatever you call it, the bolt, the bolt that goes in the oil cooler itself, sometimes is too tight. So you may have to get a pair of channel locks like this and loosen it with this and then either hand unscrew it, then hand screw it back in and then use your Allen tool, your hex head, and then tighten it back up that way because some of these are locked in there for some reason. And then the other thing was uh, a guy told me that uh, when when he took his drive shaft off he couldn't get it back on it would not line up and then I, I go well it probably the car rolled a little that's why i say you got to put chocks on the back of the tires and when you put it on the ramps make sure you're on ramps not on on jack stands but if that does happen you will have to be very very careful and uh I'll make sure the parking brake is on good and you have chocks and you have the dog on ramps on and uh um take it and put it in neutral and the whole drive shaft will lo loosen up so you can connect it back together okay so that's a pretty good tip right there so anyway everything's been good this definitely works for me so good luck god bless and have a wonderful day